Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a really simple, classic, clean and super romantic wedding makeup look. So this is bridal makeup and uh, quite likely possibly this is going to be the makeup that I am going to be wearing on my wedding day. If you are new here and you didn't know, I spent many, many years working as a professional makeup artist. I have worked with so many brides, so many bridal parties. It's safe to say I've got quite a bit of experience with bridal makeup. Obviously, as far as bridal makeup goes, you want to look like yourself, but like a really clean, polished version. You don't want to look cakey and you want it to last all day. So obviously your wedding is a long event. So we're going to be focusing on, you know, products that are really going to last on the skin, color payoff that's really going to last on the skin and going for like a really beautiful romantic kind of a smoky eye and perfect skin basically. <laughs> you guys have been asking me for the longest time to do a bridal makeup tutorial so I was like you know what the wedding's in five days well it is at the time that I'm filming this let's film this because I'm actually going to be doing my own makeup on my wedding day I've got a makeup artist who's going to be doing my bridesmaids and my mom and stuff but me oh no I was always going to be doing my own. So yeah, as always, if you've got any questions throughout the tutorial, please be sure to pop them down in the comments down below and I will answer them for you. I feel kind of nervous about this. I don't know. This is the first time I've done bridal makeup for myself. Oh, okay. Let's jump into it. Now, obviously skin is key here. We want everything to look really clean, really fresh, really snatched. So my recommendation and what I'm going to be doing is always, always, always do your eyes first. Start with the eyes and then build up the base afterwards because then you don't have to worry about fallout or smudging or if you make a mistake or you get mascara somewhere, you know, you can just wipe it off and it's very, very easy to clean up. All right. So you want to have all of your skincare done by this point, obviously. Um, if you are interested in seeing my exact skincare routine that I've been following in the lead up to my wedding, I will link it on the screen wherever the card pops up. And that's got lots of information in there about my specific specific skincare, but just make sure that you've got your skincare on. You know, you can use this time for it to sort of breathe and absorb into the skin. We want to start by prepping our eyes. I'm taking the MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot in the color Soft Ochre. This has been my go-to eye primer for the longest time. And it's also the eye primer that I used on every single one of my brides. And you might think to yourself, oh, you know, I'll just, I'll skip an eye primer. Please don't, please don't skip the eye primer. It's really, really important because we don't want your eyeshadow to get creasy. And I mean, if you're anything like me, I feel like I'm going to cry the entire time. So any help that I can get to actually keep my makeup in place is definitely what we want. So I'm just taking a very small amount of this. And as you can see, I'm actually applying it all over my lid, but then I'm also blending it down through the inner corner of the eye and a little way underneath the eyes. And I'm also blending it all the way up to the brows. We want the entire area primed, the entire area prepped. We don't want anything to move and just use the tiniest amount. You don't need to use a lot of eye primer. Like the tiniest amount is just fine. If you use too much, it can actually help cause creasing. I know it's a little bit daunting. Like don't use eye primer because it'll crease. And then if you use too much eye primer, it'll crease. Just take the slightest amount. You just want like a like a touch of it on the skin. Now, depending on what colors you choose for the day, that's kind of going to dictate what colors you go for with your eyeshadow. So you might have pink flowers or purple flowers, and therefore you might want to go for something a little bit, you know, more mauvey toned on the eyes. Or you could use some violet. You might want to do cool tones. You might want to do shimmy. You might want to do matte. You kind of need to have all of that figured out before you start to do your makeup. Test different things out. See how you feel. I'm going to be doing a majority matte look today. I might add a little shimmer on the inner corner and the brow bone, but most of the eyeshadows that I'm going to be using are going to be matte. This one here is the Pat McGrath Mothership Midnight Sun, I believe this one is called. Um, it's got kind of like a collection of neutrals, shimmers and mattes. I might give this one a try today. We'll see what this one's like. I have so many eyeshadow palettes and honestly, I was staring at them all and I was like, oh, I don't know which one to use. I also really love the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Eyeshadow Palette as a bridal palette as well. Just lots of, you know, different tones of browns and warms and there's some black in there. So this one is a very high possibility as well. We may use maybe a mixture of both, but we'll see where we end up. Now, all of the brushes that I'm going to be using today are from my own brand, Nikia Joy Cosmetics. I will link every single brush in the order that I use in the description bar down below for you guys. But taking the Pat McGrath palette, I'm going to go into this medium brown on our EO2 diffused shader. What we want to do with this is actually start to build up kind of like the overall shape of the eyeshadow and also build up a transition because we want this to be sort of really hazed out, smoked out. So what I'm doing 
is I am buffing that medium brown. And obviously, like, you can follow along with any eyeshadow palette that you've got at home. You don't have to specifically use either of these. Um, but buffing that one all the way towards the inner corner and the outer corner and just really laying that color down. And I'm also sort of buffing it upwards and outwards just slightly. I think it's important you know, with a bridal look to start off with a color that's quite neutral. So don't start out too warm or too cool. Just start with something neutral because it's a good sort of palette to build on. Coming into the other side and buffing that color through, just doing the same thing. So I'm using a mixture of windscreen wiper and circular motions here. So you really want that color to be nice and hazed out. Okay, taking a slightly smaller blending brush, I'm gonna start warming things up. So I'm gonna take this like terracotta matte brown from the palette too. And just taking a tiny bit of that, I'm gonna work that one directly into the crease. It's gonna start adding a little bit of warmth and it's also going to start deepening it up a lot more as well. See how that's made it a little bit darker and a little bit deeper. And it's also sort of helping my eye to look a lot more open. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments. I can also show you like a cool tone bridal look. Um, for me, for my coloring, for my skin tone, and for all of the colors of our wedding, it's definitely gonna be a warm tone makeup look, but I can absolutely do a cool tone look for you if you wanna see one as well. I think that the biggest thing, like the biggest tip that I can give you is over blend. Like even when you think that everything is blended out and looking perfectly seamless, keep on blending because you don't want to look back at your wedding photos later and notice any choppiness or any lines in your eyeshadow. So blend until your arm is literally going to fall off. All right, picking up the soft glam palette now. I actually feel like I actually prefer this one to the Pat McGrath one. But anyway, we've already committed. Um, I'm going to take a medium brown, so a little bit darker than the original shade that we used for the transition. And I'm still sticking to mattes. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pack that all over the lid. So you don't want to pack it up any higher than the transition shade that we've applied. So obviously, you know, don't pack it all the way up here. Just sort of take it right up to the crease and just gently pack it all over. I'm just using our flat shader brush to do this. If you use a good quality matte brown eyeshadow, you shouldn't get any patchiness too. So it really just depends on what you use, doesn't it? This one from ABH, gorgeous no complaints and then just to make sure things are super seamless take your blending brush that you used for that deeper crease color and just sort of softly buff it all out to make sure everything is in place okay so we have like our matte smoky brown kind of base laid down I think what I will do to add a little bit of dimension and a little bit of something different um, I might actually pat like a bronze shimmer right on the center of the eyes. This will help to give more of like a 3D effect and obviously draw more attention to the eyes. So I know this is annoying. I'm sorry. I'm switching between palettes, but this is the Pat McGrath one again. And I'm going to take this shimmery bronzy kind of a color. I'm going to pack that right in the center of the lid. You can use any bronze eyeshadow that you've got. It obviously doesn't have to be this one. Just a shimmery bronze is perfect. Just add the slightest little bit of reflection and the slightest bit of like attention to the center of the eye. And then whenever adding a shimmer, we always want to soften out the edges. So just blend the edges of that. See how I've got fallout under here? Doesn't matter because I haven't got any of my foundation on and that's what makes it so good to do your eyes first. Now for the lower lash line, I'm just taking that medium brown that we first started with, that first transition color. And I'm just working it underneath my eyes there. Obviously we'll be applying concealer and stuff so we will come back and sort of build on this. But just for the meantime, we just want to smoke it out, get it as close to the lash line as possible. Now, whether you do a wing or not is obviously entirely up to you. Um, for me, for my wedding day, I think that I will because I really love the way that like a soft sort of smaller wing looks when, you know, the bride's kind of like in those photos, looking down, looking at her flowers. And it's just like this really gorgeous, clean, elongated eye. I love the look of that, but I do think that on your wedding day, you're probably going to be really nervous. You're probably going to be you know, a little bit frantic. So I would recommend using tape as a guard to create the shape of your winged eyeliner because you don't want to be sort of freehanding and like shaking and then 
messing it up. And obviously, you know, it's okay if you do mess it up because we don't have any foundation or anything on. We can wipe it off. We can start again. But using tape does definitely make it a lot easier. This is extremely easy to do. You just want to take some sticky tape. This is like a micro pore. It's actually a medical tape. I love this stuff because it's meant for skin. But any kind of tape that you can find will be perfect. So to find out where you want to place your tape, you want to imagine a line following that lower waterline, that same direction that it comes out. Um, you can also angle it up to the tail of your brow. But if I was to do that, look at where my line would be. Like it wouldn't be quite right. So you really just want to follow that angle of the waterline. So lining the tape up and then placing it down. It just needs to line up with the outer corner. Obviously, again, this is totally preference based. You may prefer, you know, your wings to be more angular or more flat. It really just depends on your eye shape. And that's why it's important to really play around before the big day. So you know exactly the shape that you're after. Now, being that you're probably going to be crying, I would recommend a waterproof eyeliner. If you want to avoid a waterproof, the KVD tattoo liner is also a great option. I'm going to be using the NYX Epic Ink liner this is a waterproof and it's got a really beautiful small felt tip so it's very easy to use and then starting in the outer corner you want to start drawing your wing and you want to draw it right up against that tape and that is what is so great about doing this because you can go crazy you can make a big mess when you peel off the tape you will have a perfect straight line okay bringing that across the lid and you want to i mean it obviously depends on your eye shape as well but for me, I like that line to sort of disappear into nothing. I'm not going to be carrying it all the way into the inner corner because I only have small eyes and it sort of closes them off. So it's almost carried to the inner corner, but not quite. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an angled eyeliner brush and I'm going to take a matte black eyeshadow and I'm actually going to pat that over top of that eyeliner slightly overlapping the edge. Not only is this going to lock it in further, really prevent it from creasing, really prevent it from smudging, it's also gonna give it this really gorgeous, blurred out, romantic kind of a look. So it sort of gets rid of like the harshness that a winged eyeliner can often have. We'll make it look so soft and pretty. And it will also cover up any mistakes if you haven't got that line, you know, like perfectly straight. Um, it's a really, really good trick to try. And really focusing that brown eyeshadow right where my eye crease is there. Just to really soften that up there as well. And then once you are done smudging it out, you want to peel off the tape to reveal your perfect wing. Ta-da! And then go in with a makeup remover wipe. You can clean up the edge further if you wish and clean up any fallout. Okay, we've got both sides done. And see how, I mean, even without mascara, even without lashes on, it really softens up the wing and it just gives it this really romantic sort of lived in kind of a look. And I know that it probably looks a little bit heavy now, but it's because I don't have any other makeup on. Like once the foundation and the cheeks and the lips and everything on, this is gonna look super, super, super romantic. So just cleaning up the fallout. Now, obviously for mascara, you need to go with your True Blue tried and tested most loved mascara. Uh, I would recommend going with a waterproof. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be using the Maybelline Lash Discovery for my big day. I have worn this mascara many, many, many times. It's waterproof, obviously. And it just does not smudge. Longcomb has some really amazing waterproof mascaras as well. But you most definitely want to use a waterproof mascara. I can't recommend that anymore. Obviously, you know, crying, dabbing. You want to make it as least transfer resistant as possible. Now, obviously, because today is not my actual wedding day, I'm not actually going to use a waterproof mascara because it's quite difficult to get off your lashes. So I'm going to apply a couple of coats of the Rare Beauty Mascara, which I love. But for the actual day, definitely go with something waterproof. Definitely. So I'm going to load up both my upper and lower lashes with this. And then I'm going to put some falsies on. Now, 
Obviously, it depends again on your eye shape. It depends again on, you know, the overall look that you are going for on your day. I only have tiny little eyes, so I only want small lashes. I don't want anything that's going to, you know, majorly overcrowd my eyes or anything. So for me, I'm going to be wearing a pair from our petite set. And um, this is again from my brand Nakia Joe Cosmetics. And this is one of our sets. So all five lashes in this set are for small eyes specifically. So every single lash in here is not going to overcrowd the eyes. It's not going to over, you know, overdo anything. And they also have incredibly, incredibly flexible bands. So they're very easy to apply. And they're also very, very comfortable. You want to make sure that you don't go with a lash that's like, in any way going to irritate your eyes it's in any way going to be uncomfortable because it's just going to drive you nuts and you, your eyes are probably going to be watering enough from crying so just make sure that you choose something really comfortable what I will do though because I feel like this tutorial is going to end up super super long is I'm going to quickly finish putting mascara on off camera and I'll pop the lashes on and then we will come back and we will go probably onto the brows next and then the skin. Actually you know what we'll do skin and then we'll do brows. Alright so I've zoomed you guys out just a little bit so that you can see a little bit better because we're actually going to start working on the skin now. Lashes are on and I mean you know it still doesn't really give you an accurate idea of what the you know the eyes and the makeup will look like when it's finished so just bear with me. Now found Foundation options, primer options, obviously this very heavily depends on your skin type. Uh, if you are a normal skin type though, if you're not particularly oily, I'm very oily, I need a mattifying primer and I'm going to be using a mattifying primer today. But if you are a normal skin type or a dry skin type, I used to use this primer on my brides all the time and it was really, really good. It's the Makeup Forever HD uh, primer. It's just a really good kind of all-rounder and it gives the skin like a really nice tacky feel for you to put the foundation on top of. So just sort of like press it into the skin. I don't want you to rub your skin because we don't want to cause any extra texture. So just sort of pressing that in, let it dry down. Okay, now foundation. Now, I actually think I could do a whole separate video on the best foundations to choose for your wedding day. Um, I've got about five or six that I recommend that are my faves that will work. But for me today, and this is actually my current favorite, are uh, the two phase to Born This Way Matte Foundation. I actually think that I'm going to be wearing this on my wedding day. I've been testing it out and I absolutely love how it looks on my skin. It is a 24-hour foundation, but it's also very smoothing on the skin and it just stays looking flawless all day long. Like literally, it is perfect. Another foundation that I really recommend is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid. I used to use that on my brides all the time. It was incredibly long lasting, incredibly smoothing, and it just works beautifully underneath flash photography. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be using the Too Faced one. Now you don't wanna apply really thick, heavy layers of foundation. Just work in thinner layers. Don't over apply the product because applying too much product is what is going to cause cakiness later on. So so just sort of taking small amounts at a time and pushing it into the skin. Obviously, we can come back later and we can build on the coverage with concealer, but I don't want you to build too much on the coverage with your foundation because honestly, you will end up cakey and we don't want that for your wedding day. Go. We do not. <laughs> Another thing that's really important to remember and something that I always used to do as a professional makeup artist, make sure that you cover your ears with foundation too. When you get nervous, when you get shy, when you get upset, when you get teary, your ears go red. And if you've got foundation on your face, but not on your ears, your ears are going to be glowing red and it will not look cute. So just make sure you take the foundation over the top of your ears as well. Ordinarily, you wouldn't put your earrings in first, but I wanted to look bridal vibes for the video but yeah make sure you're carrying it over your ears as well work it up into the hairline you can come back later on and you know use a makeup wipe if you do get any foundation in your hairline but you do want to make sure that it's you know really really well blended and blended all across your face and another thing i want you to do is to take it past the jawline so <laughs> give yourself a bit of a triple chin go like this and take it down past there ideally you could even take it all the way down to your collarbones it just will look super super seamless if you're getting a spray tan as well sometimes the neck it can look a little bit dried out and a little bit more aged than it normally does when you do have a spray tan so carrying your foundation all the way down over top of your neck um, it's just going to keep everything looking really young and fresh okay that foundation is all blended it's just so smooth and perfecting on the skin i'm absolutely obsessed with it 
really, really, really recommend this one. And I actually wore it um, underneath a mask even the other day for like, I want to say about four hours. Took the mask off. It literally still looked perfect. It's a really, really good one. All right, we're going to move on to concealer now. And my best recommendation for wedding concealer is absolutely the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. Uh, this has been around for a really, really long time. It is a pro product. It is a very, very lightweight concealer. It's got like a super liquidy kind of a texture. It is actually quite runny, but it packs so much coverage. And what I want you to do is actually apply that with a blending brush, so an eyeshadow brush. So just taking very, very teeny tiny amounts of concealer at a time, I want you to start spot concealing. Now I'm gonna be using a shade here that's slightly lighter uh, than my foundation color. And it's gonna act as like a bit of a highlighter for me but I'm very gently just starting to apply that underneath the eyes, making sure to really get it in the inner corner there and very softly bringing it up to the outer corner of the eye and just continue to use sort of patting motions. I like to use an eyeshadow brush like this because it means I can get as absolutely as close as possible to the lower lash line and, you know, really get the concealer in there, really get the coverage in there, cover up any darkness, any discoloration but it doesn't disturb your eyeshadow. And then once you've done all of that super close detailed work, you wanna go back in with the sponge. Oh, sorry, I forgot to let you guys know. This is our Pro Perfecting sponge from my brand. Um, swear by this for applying foundation and concealer. It just blends everything out so seamlessly. But you wanna come back and softly pat that out. Now, what I'm actually going to do after I have finished applying this concealer, like see how lifted that eye is now. I'm actually going to go in with a second concealer. You can use this concealer over the rest of the face if you like. Um, it certainly can be used like that, but I find that I get better results using a cream concealer or, you know, a standard liquid concealer. The Pat McGrath one's absolutely amazing. But today I'm going to be using the NARS Soft Matte complete concealer. That's what this is called. I love this for bridal makeup. I absolutely love this. So I'm just going to take my sponge and I'm literally going to go straight in there. I'm going to pick that concealer up and then I'm going to very gently apply that underneath my eyes, kind of overlapping with that original concealer. The coverage that this gives in the way that it perfects the skin is like next level. It is so beautiful. So just patting that in. Obviously as well, I am an oily skin type. I find this one to be really oily skin safe, but I do also swear by the Pat McGrath one as an option as well. The Skin Fetish Concealer, gorgeous. So I'm just using whatever's left over on my sponge and I'm sort of just running over my forehead there just to sort of spread that further. How weird does it look without eyebrows? <laughs> Once um, I've got the powder on and the uh, base products are baking, um, we will come back and do the brows, but they do look a little bit scary right now. Okay, now let's get some setting powder on. Obviously, my favorite setting powder is still our velvet finishing powder from my brand, Nakia Joy Cosmetics. Swear by this. And I know so many makeup artists have been using this on brides and absolutely adoring it. It is a very, very finely milled translucent loose powder. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to press that in quite heavily on the skin, just sort of over the top of where I have put that concealer on. This powder is good for anything. You can use it just to apply. You can use it with a brush or you can bake with it, which is sort of what I'm doing today. And then I'm actually going to do a thick layer of it just at the bottom of my face, sort of like on my jawline as well, kind of creating a bit of a line where I would normally apply my contour because I want to bake that in and I really, really want that makeup to stay in place. And then I'm just pushing whatever I've got left over on my sponge into the other areas of my face to set it down because we will actually come back and knock that powder off. But while it's sort of baking, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my brows. I still love and obsessed with the Benefit Micro Filling Brow Pen. Oh, seriously, one of the most natural brow products ever. Um, it's like a three point, like a three pronged little pen and you use it to draw in little individual hair strokes. And it just looks so ridiculously natural. Like it just makes my brows look like they're not even filled in, but they're like naturally hairy, if that makes sense. And I love that look for a wedding because you don't want to look, you know, you don't want like super sort of heavy brows. You want to keep them nice and soft and natural. 
I'm just using this to sort of gently fill in the gaps. And then when you get to the tip, because it is a felt tip pencil, you can use it to create a really, really precise fine point. Absolutely, hands down, my favorite brow product. And it has been for the longest time. I also find that this one lasts, like it stays on my skin. So I don't have to worry about my brows fading halfway through the wedding. <laughs> and then for brow gel, I'm gonna be using the Benefit one. This is actually their tinted mascara, but I also love their 24, it's like the 24 hour brow setter. Um, I like a tinted one. My brows actually will be tinted. I'm going to henna tint them before the day, but this will give the same look that a henna tint will give to the hairs because they'll be the same color as the hair on my head. Combing them up, keeping them looking nice and fluffy because that's how I'm liking them right now. I love this stuff. Like your brows will not move. Like literally. They will not move. It's amazing. Now coming back with a fluffy powder brush. Again, I will link all the brushes down below. You basically want to just knock off that excess powder that has been baking on the skin. And your skin will look so ridiculously flawless underneath that. It is like perfection and it is so velvety smooth as well. Obsessed. And just taking a little excess powder that I've got and I'm just making sure to set my neck. Um, obviously, you know, you're going to be getting sweaty. It's, gonna, it's a big day. There's a lot going on. So you want everything set down perfect. All right, to add a little bit of color back into my face, I'm going to be taking the MAC Give Me Sun bronzer. I'm actually going to be using two bronzers today to contour and add shape and color back into my face. So I'm going to use the MAC one, but then I'm also going to use this Bare Minerals one. This is the color Faux Tan. You can see this is a really nice cool tone one. And in contrast to the MAC one, the MAC one's quite warm tone. So what I like to do is I actually like to sort of layer two bronzers to give more of like a dimensional effect. It just looks a lot more natural. It looks a lot more like a natural suntan, I guess. So picking up our angled contour brush, I'm going into the Bare Minerals one first. Now, what's really important with this is that you get rid of the excess. So just dab it on the back of your hand, get rid of the excess before actually going in and applying it because we don't want any patchiness on the skin. Like we want it to look really smooth and seamless. So I'm contouring my cheeks just here and then I'm also carrying that color around my hairline oh look at my little earrings swinging that's so funny we will come in with the mac bronzer the mac bronzer i just love i sort of like to apply it over the top of this one and it just gives the skin this really amazing perfected look because um the mac give me sun bronzer it's not actually a bronzer it's one of their mineralized skin finishes so it's actually a skin finishing powder i guess if you will it's really really perfecting and beautiful so just applying this around my hairline we want to add a little bit of color back into the skin, obviously. Okay, picking up the MAC one now. Now this one's very, very pigmented. So definitely again, tap off the excess. And I'm just going to start applying that around the hairline as well. Really working that through. Oh, my skin it was already looking so perfect. Carrying that one all around the outside of my face. Just over top of that other bronzer. This brush is so ridiculously soft, so you don't need to worry about it like shifting your foundation underneath. Um, it's like silk on the skin. And then to finish, I'm actually gonna be doing my jawline as well. So just contouring out my jawline. It'll just give you that sort of extra kind of snatched look in photos. And also, the sides of my nose. Okay, so I'm just running, like I'm basically pinching the bronzer brush. And I'm running it upwards and downwards, sort of in like a line on the sides of my nose. It just adds a little of the bronzer on either side and it'll really help to slim that nose down. Now, before we move into blush, I'm actually going to go back into that Soft Glam palette and our pencil brush. And I'm going to pick up that medium matte brown that we used on the lid. And I'm just going to smudge it through the lower lash line. Now, this might look a little harsh, but don't worry we're actually gonna come back in with the bronzer and using the bronzer through your eyes, underneath your eyes, you know, through the crease is an amazing, amazing way to make the whole face kind of tie in together and look really perfect and seamless. So just on a tiny little blending brush, I'm going into the MAC bronzer, picking it up, tapping off the excess again. And I'm just gonna very gently and softly 
run that through underneath that eyeshadow. And what you can do here as well is if you've lost any mascara, just go ahead and reapply it to the lower lashes. All right, moving on to blush now. And I really don't think that you can go past NARS Gilda. This is a really, really beautiful coral. Oh, it's just the prettiest blush. And I mean, mine is so well loved. This is all that I've got left, but it's gorgeous for a wedding day. I also love MAC Desert Rose. And I also love... Milani Luminoso. These are all really, really good blush options. Kind of stick within the neutral blush family. Don't go too brown. Don't go too pink. Don't go too like orangey. You really want something that kind of lends itself in all of the color families because that is what's going to pick up best on camera. So I'm going to take our tapered powder brush and I'm going to pick this one up and I'm just going to apply this just above where I have applied that bronzer. I really love the look on a wedding day of a matte bronzer, a matte blush, and then a highlighter. I don't know. It, sometimes when you use a shimmery bronzer or a shimmery blush, it can just cause confusion when it's, you know, caught on camera. Keeping everything soft and matte and then adding a shimmer, I feel like is the best way to go. Adding this onto the skin. Oh my God, I love this blush. It's so beautiful. Oh. All right, moving on to highlighter. And I'm of course gonna be using our Illuminate Highlighting Palette. This is again from my brand. I mean, surely it's not surprising that I would be wearing all of our products on my wedding day. Um, I, I really love this one. There's so many different highlight shades for so many different skin tones. And these also translate beautifully as bridal eyeshadows if you wanted to go something like soft and shimmery and more ethereal. Glow is my favorite, favorite highlighter color out of this one. Glow and Glimmer anyway. So I'm going to use a mixture of those two to highlight my cheeks. It's important when choosing your highlighter for your wedding that you go with something that's incredibly finely milled. You don't want any chunkiness, any chalkiness or anything on the skin. Anything that's going to add any texture, any extra texture, you pretty much generally want to avoid. Working that, oh my gosh, it just makes the skin look wet, but it doesn't add any extra texture. It's so beautiful. So tip of the nose, I'm gonna do the bridge of the nose, and I'm also gonna do my Cupid's bow with this one. Oh, we are starting to look super bridal now. And then just with a flat definer eyeshadow brush, just like a sort of small one, I'm gonna add the tiniest little bit of that to the brow bone. That'll just help lift the brows. And the other side. Nothing too over the top. And you don't want anything too glittery up there as well. Just very subtle. Something that's going to like really lift the face. Pack it right into the inner corner of the eyes as well. And this will give them just a pop of brightness. And it will sort of lift them as well. All right. That brings us to lips. Super, super exciting. Uh, obviously, again what kind of lip color you wear is really dictated by, you know, the theme of your wedding, by your dress, by the flowers that you're going to be carrying. If you guys know me, and I'm pretty sure that you know me pretty well by now, it's going to be a pinky nude. It is going to be a pinky nude. But what I really love for bridal makeup is a lot more lip contouring than I would normally do sort of day to day. It just gives the lips that little bit extra and it really pulls the whole makeup look together. So I've got a MAC lip liner here. This is the color Soar. This is like a medium. You'll See what I mean? See how it's like slightly deeper than a pinky nude? What I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to align the entire perimeter of my lips and then I'm going to do some lip shading and contouring with this. Really recommend that you use a lip liner on your wedding day so that your lipstick doesn't feather and it doesn't bleed. Also makes it a lot easier to get a super precise edge as well. Filled in that line and I'm just coming back. And I'm slightly shading just the outer corner of my lips. Basically, we're going to go for a bit of an ombre. I remember my brides, like when it came to the lip liner, I was like, okay, don't talk, don't laugh, don't breathe while I do your lip liner. And they'd be like, mm -hmm. because obviously it's the final thing and you want to get it perfect. So shading that in just underneath the cupid's bow. And then to finish the lips, I'm gonna take this Rare Beauty liquid lipstick. It is generally a good idea to use a liquid lipstick going into your wedding ceremony, because obviously you're gonna kiss your groom at the end of the aisle. Um, this one from Rare Beauty as well, what is it called? Their lip, I think it's like their lip souffle. This is the shade Courage, and this is just one of the 
most like a lightweight, comfortable, hydrating kind of liquid lipsticks. It's a very, very comfortable to wear, which I love. So I'm going to take, I'm going to scrape off most of the excess. I'm going to take a little of this and just sort of rub it on the inner portion of my lips, kind of overlapping that shading that we've already done. It's very subtle, but it gives the lips a really nice ombre kind of effect. Oh my gosh, wedding makeup. Yeah, you guys. This is definitely how my makeup is going to be on the day. I absolutely love it. Oh. If you want to take the lip shading one step further, you can go in with a liquid lipstick that's sort of like a very light kind of a color. So a little right in the center of the top and bottom. Rub that in. See how it makes it a little bit more of like an ombre. But it's still very subtle, like, you know, not offensive. <laughs> and then lastly, to finish off, you want to set everything down. Please don't skip setting spray. It's so important. It will really finish the makeup. It will get rid of any powderiness that's on the skin and it will lock it in place. Our velvet powder will keep, the, you know, everything looking perfect and mattified, but a setting spray just helps that extra little bit. So you have to have to do it. Uh, my favorite, obviously, still the Gerard Cosmetics Slay All Day Setting Spray. I absolutely love this stuff, swear by it. It is the best setting spray on the market by far. And I do still have a discount code with them. So you can use the code JOYBOGO. That will get you two full sizes of these for the price of one. Or if you don't want to, you can use the code JOY and that will get you 30% off. But I actually do have my own scent with them, Rose. I'm obviously using that. It's my favorite scent. I did a collaboration with them years ago and I still love and adore this scent. Uh, but they've got lots of other scents as well if Rose isn't up your alley. So I just like to prime it in the air a little. So that we know it's all coming out smooth and then you want to cover your face in it. Make sure to cover your neck, your chest, and then use your hand to fan the makeup. Don't touch it. Don't open your eyes. Don't do anything. You don't want to touch your skin for at least, um, I want to say about 10 minutes because you really want to allow that to really set down. Because if you touch your makeup now, you can potentially transfer it off and we don't want to do that. Okay? Don't do it. But this is pretty much the finished look. Actually, I'll pop a veil on so you can kind of get the full picture. Give me two seconds. All right, guys, I've got a veil on. Here it is. It is just a really classic bridal makeup look. Um, you know, it looks great on all skin tones, on all skin types. And all of these products that I have used today are really going to last the entire day. Like they are locked in. They are not going anywhere. I promise you, you're not going to get cakey. You're not going to get, you know, greasy, shiny. Your makeup's not going to melt off. It's not going to transfer off. It's absolutely going to stay in place. And the eyes are sort of just heavy enough to add like a little bit of drama, but it's not too much. And you've got that beautiful elongated cat eye kind of effect. When you look down because you've got that smoked out winged eyeliner. Oh, I actually feel emotional because this is this is literally I'm going to wear this I'm going to wear this makeup on my wedding day. <laughs> and it's like 5 days away. Oh my god, I'm getting upset. <laughs> That's how you know it's right. That's how you know it's right. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, no crying on camera, guys. No crying on camera. It's bad. We can't be doing that. No. <laughs> but I hope that you guys really enjoyed seeing this in-depth tutorial. Like I said, if you've got any other questions about absolutely anything, please pop them down in the comments down below. And like I said, if you are interested in seeing a more cool tone bridal look, or if you want to see a pinky one, let me know all your requests in the comments. I can absolutely do some other ones. But for me, this is it. This is like the classic... <sighs> She's perfect. Honestly, I'm obsessed with this makeup look and all of the products. But I love you guys heaps. I hope that you enjoyed this in-depth bridal tutorial. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And I will catch you all in my next video. Bye, guys.